The Brooklyn Navy Yard in the New York borough of the same name. Sitting on the edge of the water, staring at Lower Manhattan, its fortunes have ebbed and flowed over the ages, especially after it was decommissioned by the Navy in the late 1960s. The Navy Yard's history actually goes back to the founding of our country. It was one of the original five shipyards incorporated by John Adams as one of his last acts of his presidency. It's really amazingly rich history. At its peak during World War II, there were 70,000 people who worked here every day. And it was really the center of American industrial and military might for generations and generations. When Rob Ferraroni, founder of Ferra Designs, moved into the space, it had seen better days. But there were hints of what may come. The Navy Yard wasn't necessarily abandoned, but it wasn't in the best of shape, you know, going back to the late 90s. It was actually almost like a ghost town. When we moved in here and we started setting up shop, I knew that it would be a secure space for many years to come and that it would also support growth. Ferraroni is part of an old guard, a New Yorker who actually speaks with a New York accent, who has seen the changes firsthand. Traditional manufacturers, including Ferrer and set designer Stiegelbauer, who makes for Saturday Night Live, among others, and has been in the Navy Yard since 1987, have now been joined by the likes of a stunning rooftop farm that also functions as an education centre established by Brooklyn Grange in 2012. Add to the list a craft distillery that predates the farm by a couple of years and you have a sense of the change. The exciting thing about Kings County operating in the Navy Yard is its uh, rich link to history. There's a lot that has happened here that has centered around the drinking culture of Brooklyn. We operate out of a building that was built in 1899 as our main production space. and We have a cocktail bar and a, a beautiful guardhouse. But the freshest player on the scene is New Lab, a gleaming reconfigured hangar featuring a collective of companies mostly culled from the tech sector. This was a place where naval ships were being manufactured and constructed. So the ceilings are quite high because there are these cranes that would carry the hulls of ships from one side of the building to the other. There was so much potential to really treat this as a place where New York could have manufacturing and technology innovation come back to the Navy Yard. Entrepreneurs that are hands-on really gain a lot from being in the space here. There are prototyping labs for additive manufacturing, three different kinds of 3D printing. Anything that you can imagine making will help you figure out how to make. But it's not just New Yorkers flocking to the yard to do business. Japanese duo Atsuo and Akiko appreciate the community spirit and soak up inspiration for their handmade accessories. We moved to Navy Yard seven months ago and we started to talk about collaboration with other artists so that we can expand our brand name and then product to different fields. The unique about the Navy Yard is that we feel very secure and everybody's help each other. But for companies that have been in the Navy Yard since the 1990s or earlier, do they worry about the shifting tides? I don't think the gentrification issue will really uh, reveal itself here in the Navy Yard. It's not the type of place that is going to allow for the prices to creep up to a point where it's not affordable because it would contradict their own mission statement. It's very rare to find a place like the Brooklyn Navy Yard. There aren't many places like this left in Brooklyn. And he should know. For Monocle, I'm Ed Stocker.